Welcome to Light Over Heat with Professor David Yamani. I'm in California this week visiting family, but I wanted to quickly share a conversation I had on the streaming news service Newsy about American gun culture in the wake of the Uvalde shooting. We're joined now by David Yamane, a professor of sociology at Wake Forest University. David is also the author of several books, including Concealed Carry Revolution, Liberalizing the Right to Bear Arms in America. David, thank you so much for your time this morning. Mass shootings are something we see far more often in America than any other country. We just heard that reporter allude to it in that mm -hmm. confrontation with Senator Ted Cruz. How did guns become so ingrained in U.S. culture, and how does it compare to other countries? Well, certainly guns in the United States are exceptional relative to most of our other peer nations, and we can trace the roots of that to the very founding of the country. You know, when the first colonists uh, disembarked from their boats in Jamestown, Virginia in 1607, they had guns with them. And guns were commonly owned through the revolutionary period, uh, through the early republic, and on through American history to today. So we've always been a nation that has respected civilian ownership of firearms far more than our pure uh, countries. So a part of this conversation, I mean, just when I'm, you know, looking at Twitter, watching the news and other um, local stations from out of Texas, um, we know that other countries have had mass shootings in the past, right? And they passed gun control legislation afterward. And in many cases, it was very swiftly afterward. So why doesn't that happen here in the U.S.? Well, it certainly was swift, but it was also severe. So mm -hmm. if you take the case of England, which is frequently raised, you know, after a school shooting there, they decided to ban all handguns. And so this, I think, actually becomes an impediment to our making progress on making guns safer in America because when people want to do something, as they rightfully do after a horrific event like this, they point to other countries that acted immediately, but those were almost always bans and confiscations of weapons. And that, I believe, is a non-starter in the United States. Yeah, we saw that in Australia mm -hmm. after the uh, 1996 uh, Port Arthur massacre. Uh, really tight restrictions afterwards and a buyback program uh, to get some of the guns out of the hands and they stopped seeing mass shootings uh, throughout. But in, the, but in the same respect, they don't have a comparable Second Amendment like the United States. Yeah, and, uh, and again, I think that in a country in which you have 30 to 40 percent of Americans owning firearms, the willingness of people to uh, have those taken back from the, from them, from the government, is just not likely to happen, uh, regardless of how people view the Second Amendment, whether it has to do with individual rights or the militia. You know, that gun ownership is an extremely normal thing in America, and the desire to uh, forego that is just not there. So in your book, Concealed Carry Revolution, Liberalizing the Right to Bear Arms in America, you write about how gun laws have really evolved from restrictions over carrying guns to now constitutional carry in states like Texas, for example. So how has gun culture here in the U.S. led to the easing rather than tightening of laws? Well, I think that we see a lot of attention given to what's happening at the federal level, but a lot of the action on gun rights and gun control takes place at the state level. So in certain places, you see actually a tightening of uh, restrictions on firearms in New York State, Connecticut, Maryland, uh, blue states, really, California included. Uh, we see a tightening of restrictions on firearms, but then in more red and some purple states, we see a loosening of restrictions on firearms. And probably the biggest example of the loosening of restrictions is this movement to make it easier for private citizens to carry concealed firearms in public. So you know, the shall issue revolution, which took place in the 80s and 90s, has given way to this permitless carry revolution that we're living in now with 25 states allowing anybody who can legally possess a gun to carry it in public concealed. David, you made professor of sociology at Wake Forest University. We appreciate you coming on talking about this with us. Thank you. Thanks.